Hello, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome to the Education on Fire podcast network. This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. Do you need help and support in creating and embedding music in your school? If so, we have created Primary Music on Fire to help you with just this, a music membership site that's taking the fear out of teaching music by giving you the step-by-step skills and ongoing support you need to produce lifelong musical memories for you, your school, and your pupils. Go to educationonfire.com forward slash primary hyphen music. Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Season 6, Episode 91. Hello, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast and welcome again to the this continuing season of English and literacy and, and our sort of deep dive into exactly how we can support you in doing that. And today I'm really excited to be welcoming Hayley Taylor, who's from Education City. And we've just been chatting just before we started recording to say that we're not related despite the surname. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, welcome, Hayley. And thanks so much for chatting to me today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm quite excited. Fantastic. So give us a little bit of background about yeah, I mean, your professional because I know you started as a teacher and how you sort of got involved in Education City and sort of fill in those gaps for us. Okay so I actually started um, as an architect. I worked as a junior architect for a couple of years but um, you know when just some something doesn't feel right um, and obviously I'm one of those I'm very much a people person. I talk to everybody. Um, architecture isn't like that so I began volunteering um, at a secondary school in Leicester and then they offered me the job as a TA. And then I it just kind of worked my way up from there. I worked as um, a HLTA, um, a TA for special educational needs. And then I became a primary school teacher. Um, and then within that, obviously, my, my interest in special needs was sort of inspired from my first job. Um, I got my master's in special educational needs. And then by uh, this time last year, um, I just kind of hit that point where it was like, okay, the only place to go from here is to become a head teacher or, you know, a deputy head. And I really felt like my place was with the children, with the teaching. So I decided to look for an alternative challenge. And now sort of I, I work at uh, Education City, yeah, doing my job, which I absolutely love. And so can you take us through what what is Education City and, and what is your job and, and how do you still have that? opportunity to interact with everybody and like you say have that sort of social element which you obviously really enjoyed yeah well as I say like many teachers nowadays that are leaving the profession of teaching I think the working week became an, an awful lot essentially in terms of paperwork um, and I said to everybody here when I came for the interview I'm leaving teaching because I don't enjoy being a teacher anymore it's not because I don't enjoy teaching and there's that whole aspect that, you know, a, a good sort of 80 percent of the teachers working week now is paperwork. And I joined Education City after using it for a bit and realizing, firstly, how fun and engaging it is for children, but actually how useful and time saving it could be for educators once, you know, their eyes have been opened to it. Um, and now my role is to support Education City in developing the learning resources and any tools um that are created but also in assisting with integration to schools and training educators on how to use education city in a way that i envisage for them so i tailor each training session to suit the needs of that particular school so that sort of personalization i guess is really key isn't it because sometimes people find it hard to fit into an existing system and they think well that's fine but i'm not sure about this or i'm doing this i'm not sure how that fits so to have that personalization i guess is a real asset for you Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, contacting the schools beforehand and sort of saying, OK, you know, what is it that you want from me? You know, Do you want to look at everything? Is there a specific focus and finding out what particular programs of study they already follow and how we can tie in with that? So we're, they're not um, using us as um, using Education City as a separate entity. We're actually there supporting what they already do. So can you give us some examples of, of how schools are using it and, and exactly how it's sort of, for, for those who literally have never heard of it before, could actually envisage it being used in their school or in their classroom? 
So um, Education City essentially is um, an interactive teaching and learning tool for every type of educator and learner. Um, it's predominantly aimed at pupils from age three to 12, so primary uh, setting. It's completely aligned to national curriculum um, and really, really useful in providing um, like a continuity in learning right from preschool up to leaving primary school at year six. We're actually celebrating 20 years in um, education in September, which, you know, is quite fun. Um, but the idea behind Education City is that there are different tools that are there to cater for different areas of the curriculum and for different learning styles as well. Um, obviously, children will learn in very different ways. You, you can't sort of group children together and they're all going to copy this. Um, and that is one of the things that's so good about Education City is that they have different tools to cater to those. To name a few, we have um, some really useful tools to support discussion and debate skills. And although I know these skills aren't really assessed as such anymore, I believe it's still a really important uh, skill in building key foundations, uh, such as you know the confidence of children when they're talking to others or when they're reading aloud, um, even like down to turn taking and speaking and listening skills. We also have interactive activities uh, that will talk children through base skills to introduce a new unit or for any children that have massive gaps in their learning, these can be used to fill those gaps. And a lot of our activities actually support independent learning as well. So enabling learners to learn through their own pace. So it really then sort of gives you sort of a, an overarching idea of being able to to visualise in terms of what you're learning or, or how it's fitting together and, and, and how you can sort of see that learning progress, I guess, especially like say if you can chart it all the way through from your, the beginning all the way through to when you finish primary school. And, oh, yeah. And, and, and specifically sort of... For, sort of English and literacy that we're talking about on this season what how how would you if, if, if I was saying well you know we're having a particular sort of English focus at the moment or literacy focus or or I guess even maybe we're going to use a certain topic within that area to do it how would you then sort of suggest using Education City to sort of support them to do that as an actual example? I can give you an example of you know the tools that we have available that support so many different areas of English or literacy we have tools that encourage handwriting and writing skills. I know handwriting is a massive thing nowadays, um, but, you know, you're building it right from that EYFS right up. So it, it, it's starting them very young in, in sort of a game format so that children are learning when they don't realise they're learning. And I say all the self-mastery skills that we have available, the children are learning how to learn, essentially. Um we do have tools for phonics, we have tools for spelling, we have tools that actually go right up to children being able to put together quite complex sentences, understanding different punctuation types, um, you know, how to create an expanded noun phrase. So it starts, say it's that continuity of learning, it starts right from EYFS in terms of the phonics and the spelling skills, and it goes right up to year six in terms of being able to write about different genres. There are so many tools. I, I would kind of spend a good hour just talking to you about all of them. Does it mean that, that each child needs to have access to um, an iPad or, or a handheld device in order to access it? Or can you do it through whiteboards? Or how, how does it practically work? Um, it works both ways, actually. Um, you know, we've got tools that are designed for um, the educator to use with a small group of children or with a whole class. Um, but then there's also tools that are there for the children to use on either laptops or, I, I mean, at the moment, I know everything is being updated um, so that it can be used on an iPad or a tablet. Um, so we like to, you know, we like to keep up to date with everything that's going on. And obviously with children's learning, because so many children now have an iPad at home as opposed to having a laptop or a home computer so it's being able to follow through with that because you know we have a home access as well so the children can take their learning home with them I, I was just going to say that, that that really is quite an important I think certainly from my kids sort of going through school as well just sometimes when you sort of capture their imagination at school in what they're doing for them to want to show you later or to sort of say, oh, we've been doing this and I can carry it on now. Not in that kind of this is your homework, get on and do it kind of thing, yeah. but in, in, in that sense that it's just, 
it's just a bit of a blurring really you know in terms of I go to school to do x and I come home and do y it's that you know you're learning all the time and and it can sort of ebb and flow a little bit and I think when it's a very supportive way which is an enhancement of everything that's going on that's a very different feel than like you say just being taught in school and then homework at home and I think I think having I guess it's all these sort of organisations where the name just can, like, say, be synonymous with both, you know, just education yeah. generally rather than being in school or being at home. Well, yeah, exactly. That's it. And, you know, and for the very reason we do call the, the homework side of things when we refer to it, when I do like the um, the on-site training sessions, I call it home learning because it isn't homework. Yes, by all means, teachers or educators can set pieces of homework for the children to complete at home. But it's the home learning aspect. It's the fact that children then want to go onto their iPod at uh, iPod, <laughs> iPad or laptop when they're at home and actually have a play. So many of our activities are playful in a sense. You know, they're fun, they're engaging, but they are playful. So the children don't realize that they're learning at that point. They're continuing on. And we do have interactive online game for English, maths um, and science um, as well as the languages. And those, doing those with the children, children absolutely love them. Again, they don't realise they're improving their spelling skills whilst they're doing it or their phonic skills whilst they're doing it because it's so much fun. I definitely feel that sometimes I, th- I think there's a real sort of understanding that could be gained from that idea is the fact that, you know, as teachers, as ed- educators, as organisations, you know, we we have this over- overseeing view of kind of, you know, we want children to be learning to read and to write and 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 be educated in the things which are going to be essential to them as they grow up um but when they don't feel like they're being educated because they have to be educated like i say that's when the whole understanding for them and the feeling for them is very different and um yesterday i was at the um the music and education i was like the music and drama education expo in london and i went to one of the stalls and it was it was about music theory i mean and you can't get what you would perceive to be anything more studious than learning to you know the notes and the key signatures yeah. and all that kind of thing and the books were beautifully produced all the way from the very beginning all the way up through to sort of grade eight which is um, even baffled me as a professional musician which is slightly scary but <laughs> that's a whole nother story um, but 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 one of the things that also produced was a set of apps that go along with this this study and it was all game based you know there were sort of leading scores as playing against people within your class or people within your organisation that you were learning with and, and moving things around and all the things that you do in that game format on, on apps and iPads all the time and I just thought it was a very clever thing to do and I, th- I think that the, the sort of combination of kind of organizations and technology and and the more sort of traditional setup of being in school I think as they start to merge and work together then then it really helps I think to sort of like you said as we were talking about before to sort of merging that sort of home perspective of life and also the the more traditional learning side as well oh completely completely I mean going back to sort of education city tools um although we don't have modules for um topic work sort of history geography we have so many english tools that can be used for cross-curricular learning or blended learning so again um when you get a child so um enthused by a topic um i remember when we did world war ii i converted my whole classroom into a world war ii bunker And then the writing that I got out of those children was phenomenal because they were able to empathize and they were able to put themselves in the shoes of those soldiers or those children at that point. Um, So we we do have an awful lot of um, cross curricular tools that can be used for history and geography uh, from World War Two and right up to the Romans. Uh, so again we're trying to support that cross-curricular learning that blended learning or you know even that carousel learning as well by having the different tool types that can be used by educators for students in different ways and it's something which I've been hearing a lot recently in terms of the the whole learning different subjects from for children at that primary age is is so far removed from their natural way of learning <laughs> you know because they're just learning they're just immersing in things and 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 we sort of call it cross curricular don't we and and, yeah. and all those kind of things because we have to have an education spin on it but I think <laughs> I, I, I think when we understand that the starting point is that for children learning actually is that they just want to be immersed in something and like you say when they can really feel it and understand 
understand it and empathize with it and actually be completely embodied by whatever it is that they're studying th- that opens the door because then they, they don't feel like yes i'm now having to do some english work or some mass work or whatever it happens to be it's integral to what it is that they've been involved in and, and and again, that that just takes them into a, into a world of wanting to be part of it and to and to express themselves in that particular area that they've been studying. Oh, completely, completely. Um, you know, as you say, it, it's it's about you know teaching a child Roman numerals. I found so difficult because I found it difficult myself. But actually doing a unit on Romans and then saying, okay, these are your coins to trade with. The children then have to understand what the numerals are worth. So being able to complete the activity, you know, and again, it, it's practical, you know, it, it's appealing to those kinesthetic learners as well as those learners who, you know, appreciates oral information or visual information. And for those teachers thinking back to when we first started talking in terms of, you know, being able to save them time and, and, and all those kind of things. What are some of the sort of practical things that they can they can use within Education City that they can be thinking, ah, oh, I've just gained myself an extra coffee break at home yeah. rather than marking or whatever it happens to be? Because I'm sure people would really like to hear about that. Oh, yeah. There are so many um, tools that are available. We have obviously like um, a planning tool, if you like, where um, – teachers or as we call them here educators because we understand that it's not just teachers who teach nowadays you've got your hrtas you've got your tas you've got your homeschoolers um so many people teach um so we we do call them educators but they are able to put different content types together in almost like a planning folder and then use that folder for themselves give it to another member of staff because we understand nowadays that you can get two three four even five form entry schools so being able to share that information with another teacher is vital they can also then um, publish those folders for the children to do and again you know they can put those for classwork they can put it for the home learning so then all the children have to do is log on and it's there it's there for them so it's saving time in the long run for teachers we do also have we have tests um, at the moment that are for um, the end of key stage but soon we will actually have um, some assessments that currently being worked on and you know we will then be the only online teaching and learning resource that not only offers education educators the tools to create unit tests but also offers time saving skill of marking each of the tests um having the computer assess the gaps um and providing feedback to the students because that's what our tests do and that's something that saves so much time for educators you know if you imagine you've got 30 children in your class but nowadays it's like 30 plus And you're having to do an English test and a grammar and punctuation test and a spelling test. You know, that's 90 tests that you've got to mark. Whereas our tests, they're marked for you. You know, you're given a rundown. What are the gaps in the learning? How how many questions were actually attempted by the student? And then Education City, the site will actually create an independent revision journal for each child based upon the questions that they've gotten wrong. So, you know, it it goes straight into their login so the children can go on, you know, extension activities. The children finish, you can say, okay, go and do your revision journal. And it's there for them. So you really do have that sort of, I mean, I I sort of talk about planning, but just that kind of, you can almost sort of set up what it is that you need as a general um, folder like you say or situation but then with all those extra things and the extra learning and the fact that like you say if someone's finished they can then do this or they can do something else then you're not having to deal with all those things individually all the time and exactly like you said about the tests you know 90 tests or 90 sets of marking which has all been automated which which just makes so much sense doesn't it because then it gives oh, the yeah, teacher completely. the time to be able to have conversations about the follow-ups with that because they've already got all the information and all the feedback and all the marks done for them Exactly, exactly. And obviously, you know, with teachers being able to look at that revision journal, you can see where the gaps are for the children. Um, You know, when you have a child come to you from a new school or when you have a child who is EAL or EFL, you'll be able to look and go, okay, so they can do this, but these are the gaps. Because you can do your planning and you can do your assessment and you can essentially complete daily teacher life, on the same site actually you've got the tools for the kids it's just got that fluidity to it it's got that ease of purpose and also you know bringing it back to English literacy 
if all of that's done for you, you can actually return the focus back to the classroom and supporting the children instead of worrying about the marking or the planning or the testing because it's all there. And, you know, you probably understand as well as I do, English is probably one of the hardest languages to master because it's made up from so many different um, lingual contributors. Um, but actually, by having all of this in the one place, it does give teachers back their time to p- return the focus to students. I mean, I think I think that's that that must be the the, the biggest selling point of, of all is just that because that's what everyone wants, like you say, and, and the reason that you sort of wanted to step away from the classroom, that time, effort, and kind of all inclusive and <laughs> of, of everything, just needing to be involved and in taking everything of every part of you all the time that it's happening, and and I guess also in terms of if you have a substitute teacher coming in or if if you know you're going to be out of the classroom for any time because the the children are experiencing the same thing because of that continuation, you don't have that sense of well we were doing this but it's now going to look very different tomorrow because so and so is coming in to take the class because I'm away um, and, and I can see that kind of ongoing sense of oh this feels very familiar we understand how it works and and also the ongoing assessment as well because you know we do need to assess to, to understand what people do and don't know and when that's just an integral um, part of it without it being intrusive and very test feeling then I, th- I think that's a, probably a win-win situation. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, when I go to the on-site sessions, uh, I make sure to say to them, set up a supply teacher account, because then if you're off ill or, you know, you're going to be on a course next Tuesday, whatever it is, you can create the work for that day, send it to the supply teacher. And then all the supply teacher's got to do is to log in and it's all there for them. And, and I guess they can do that at any point as well, can't they? So it's not that kind of turn up in the morning and then sort of have a very quick debrief and then away you go. They can actually, if they want to plan and they want to just have it, they've got more they've got more notice than that, then they can actually feel more secure themselves, which I guess all is going to aid the actual, the quality of the day for themselves, delivering it and also for the children in the school as well. Oh, exactly. You know, it, it continues that continuity of learning. That your children have started a unit using Education City. They carry on through that unit. The supply teacher's there. And it does get to a point um, that the children end up knowing more about Education City than the teachers do. You know, they, they say to you, oh, you have to click on that button there and it shows you this. You know, we've got a couple of hub schools that actually use Education City every single lesson without fail and we've walked into a couple of those lessons before and the the children have gone oh now click on that miss that will make that work or click on that miss that's where you get the volume from and it is becoming an age where children you know give it 20 years time children will be coming to school with ipads not notebooks yeah, I mean, I mean, it is just an integral part of everybody's life, isn't it? You know, from the, from the having basically the world in your pocket on a smartphone to everything else. You know, you, children just expect that that is an integral part of what their day is going to look like, or not even think about it. It just is because that's what they've always been exposed to and what they know. And I think that's only going to increase as we go forward. So I think using it or having a tool which works brilliantly for what you're trying to do and for it to be a safe and and e- user friendly environment is just. I mean, that's really the goal. I guess for you oh yeah yeah exactly exactly and you know I've said to these guys as well if I knew half as much as I know about Education City when I was teaching I'd probably still be a teacher wow (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's just it just is it's one of those I get so passionate about it because I know what teachers are going through I know what TAs have to do in terms of intervention because I've I've been there I've done it um so if I can at least get, you know, teachers where they're using it, how it can be used, then it makes me happy because I feel like I've given them a bit of their life back. Yeah, and it's that whole thing of working smarter rather than harder, isn't it? And and then, like exactly. you said before, you can put exactly. your efforts where you need to be. And and is it is it something which the a whole school needs to really sort of buy into? I mean, sort of figuratively and literally, and in, in in terms of it becoming part of the the fabric of how they all learn, or is it something that you can do class by class? I mean, how do you sort of generally see it? I mean, obviously, it can be doing class by class, but personally. Again, I keep using that same phrase, the continuity of learning. Yeah. If you've got the um, the EYFS children working on, you know, even just having a, the screen open during the class time and the children are working on it there and then, they go into year one, they know the characters. 
they know which buttons to press for what it does. Um, they move into year two, they're understanding the learning slightly more and they understand how to educate themselves because they're, they're used to everything on Education City. And then by year six, they know exactly what's going on. They know how to inform themselves um, if they don't understand something. They know how to boost their knowledge about something. Again, it's that teaching themselves how to learn. And and that really is the direction I think that everything's going to head towards if it's I mean it is already but just that sense of you know information is there as long as you know how to access it and how to learn about it then then that's the most important thing that we can really teach and 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 then it also opens up like I said before about the space for that that human interaction between the teacher and the and students because then you can have that slightly broader conversations about life and and how it fits in and and so the actual sort of literal learning from a, an academic point of view is 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 slightly sort of taken sort of 180 and as much as you can teach yourself certain things will impart what we need to impart and we can discuss it and we can pull it apart in our own way and probably more individually that which I think is probably the key so you've got the individual learning from a from an education city point but you've also then got the the individual learning and those conversations between teacher and pupil as well exactly exactly fantastic so if people are excited about this, I mean, I, I'm, if I can just sort of see sort of minutes and hours of, of teachers' lives sort of um, suddenly being given back to them, which I think is a good enough reason to check anything out anyway, despite all the great tools and features you've said about, where's the best place for them to go and check it out and find out more about it? Well, go on to educationcity.com. Um, you will find out more information there. There's uh, obviously with this email, this phone number. But yeah, you know, like most things nowadays, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be able to find out so much information just by having a look and then obviously you'll be you'll be able to meet the characters that way as well and and if they um, invited you to come in sort of you said about sort of coming in doing a a sort of a workshop and and showing how it all works does that sort of just give them an extra kind of understanding of of what's involved and sort of a, a, a sort of a user interface insight i guess yeah yeah and i mean you know the fact that when i'm there um in person they can sort of say well what does that bit do what does that do can you show me one of those and so i'm i'm answering the questions there and then as as well as having built that sort of tailored training to to what their needs are i'm you know i'm saying okay well let's have a look at one of these what are you doing at the moment in maths okay well let's have a look at one of these what's what sort of genres are you looking at in english okay well let's have a look at one of those um so it is very much tailoring to the needs of that school so educationcity.com is the place to go and and have a look at that and we'll have um both the links to the website and facebook and all of that on the show notes and from there if you go to educationonfire.com and in the search bar just put education city we'll have the show notes and all of those things there for you to to check out as well so Haley, thanks so much for chatting to me it's been really interesting um it's, it wasn't something that i'd come across before and uh, before we'd actually started um discussing coming on the podcast and checking it out and i've been really really intrigued as to exactly how it works and that it sounds like a really great tool and a great asset to the not just teachers but in in terms of the way education is um, progressing and developing for the the benefit of everyone so thanks very much for being on the show no not a problem thank you very much for having me I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I just wanted to remind you that we have some free downloadable English and literacy resources that have been given to us very kindly by teachingpacks.co.uk. If you go to our website, educationonfire.com, and in the top menu, click on blog, you will see each week I've been putting a free resource for you to download and explore to help you in your classroom. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to chatting to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information of each episode and to get in touch, go to educationonfire.com. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.